Hey crafters, uh, welcome to uh, the DM's Craft Short Tip. I'm uh, DM Scotty, as you know. And I had a little short video for you today. Uh, I wanted to talk about a new project of mine I was working on. And what I've done is I've done some stuff with webs uh, that I thought were, were really interesting. And I have done, I made a shaft, uh, a way to do a vertical shaft uh, for my game. And I want to talk about what I did and how I did it. I'm not really doing any crafting this, this uh, vid. I'm just going to kind of show uh, the end result of what I've done and explain how I did it. All the techniques have been done before um, in other videos, so I'm just going to move right on to the uh, showing uh, what it looks like and, how, and explain a little bit how I did it. And uh, let's move on to the table. First thing I wanted to show you today was a section of a cave tile. And uh, it's kind of nice because uh, you can see how this has a curve here. Um, stuff like this, this kind of would be hidden from the player. So if they go around the corner, then they can see this kind of stuff. But what I've got here is a tile and I put some webbing on it um, because there are spiders in this layer. And I thought it'd be a nice touch to actually add some webbing to the tile. But I'm taking it a step further. This is actually a vertical shaft and so the vertical shaft is going to be represented uh, by this piece. And uh, so here's the piece I did, and it will go, it will sit on the tile like this. And so this will represent the wall of the shaft. And I've put webs on that also with the web technique that I've shown earlier in my uh, spider web video. Um, so what will happen is when the players enter this tile, um, it'll be like a regular tile. And then when they look up and see, they'll be able to see the shaft that goes up um, whatever height, you know, they'll see into the darkness. But one thing I also wanted to add was this, to this was um, some cocoons. And I'm going to do that by this technique. And here, I'll show you right now. <clears throat> so I'll take this ring. And this is about an inch wide. So this is nice because the players can, can stand on this. Uh, you know, with the regular wall here, they'd be kind of falling off and stuff. So... I kind of thought it'd be better to uh, have this ring like this when I was doing this vertical uh, shaft. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some pieces I made and I made these cocoon pieces and they are just um, thin cardboard that I've done the web te technique on. I just ran it across to make it look like a cocoon and I'm going to add these to the ring uh, like they're, da they're hanging down um, from the walls. So what I'll do is I'll grab my glue gun, and I'm just going to start adding these on. What I'm going to do, though, first is I'm going to grab my tile. So I kind of a reference. I'll put it on there. Get it centered for you there. And I'll start adding these on. And I kind of wanted to have them vertical, so I was going to put them like this. Just start adding them around the around the edge there. That's a nice little effect. And the fact of them being flat really would make it easier for players to stand on these as they climb up the wall. All right. So I've got those on there now. So, um, so now when the players um, come into the tile, they look around, they see the spider webs. This room is just covered in webs. They look up the shaft into the darkness, and they see these cocoons dangling from the walls of the shaft. So probably a sensible player say, okay, let's go to the next room and leave. But this, this player, they, these uh, players say, oh, hey, let's climb the shaft. So this one... Uh, decides to climb the shaft and would I could just put the figure here like they're climbing the shaft and then I could just keep a tr keep track of um, have the player keep track of how high they are uh, put a marker or just keep it up keep track on a piece of paper or a dice how high they are off the ground and uh, if there are any encounters or anything you know I could place the monsters on this you know uh, 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 wall the, the, this uh, piece that represents the shaft is there as they're climbing up and trying to hang on and fight so uh, it could be a lot of fun, and that's, that's a nice way to uh, show that. I also did this over the doorway because 
the doorway, you know, would be a certain height, maybe maybe six or seven feet high, and then it would it would morph into the wall, the rest of the wall going up the shaft. So I put that in there to represent the fact that uh, the wall will keep going up uh, even though uh, there's a doorway there. So that's kind of a nice way to do that. And this is a, a way you could do kind of a vertical uh, thing like this. And it's gonna, this is gonna be a big part of the adventure I'm doing, so I really wanted to represent it with a piece like this. But normally, you wouldn't really have to worry about it much. Um, but if you're, if you're having vertical shafts, that might be a, a nice, uh, elegant solution for you. Now I want to move on to another piece I did, um, and it is a, a web bridge. And we'll go to that now. Now here you see I set up a nice cavern area, and this part represents uh, a deep pit that uh, is between this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. And these two pieces will also be vertical shafts uh, like the other, so I'm going to do a ring for those like I did for the one I just showed you. But I want to show you the, uh, the web bridges I made. Uh, I just used a thin piece of cardboard, did the web technique with the glue gun, and uh, I'll use those for bridges, so there'll be one bridge uh, going across here, and one bridge going up. Actually, that one's there, and that one's there. So I did the kind of uh, scalloping on the end to kind of make it look like it was a web bridge, bridge that was stretching across the ravine. Uh, one, you could have some fun with the players as they try to use this, because uh, it's going to be very springy, uh, and if more than... Um, one player gets on it, it's going to sink lower and lower. So you can have a lot of fun with the players. Oh, crap, you know, and doing acrobatics checks if, they, if they're taking it too fast or if there's more than one of them on there. Uh, you can even have it snap if you want. But the, the web is pretty strong, so it would take, you know, a bunch of players to be on it once, which most of them aren't, aren't that uh, crazy. But, um, you know, if several of them got on, it, got on it at once, you could have the bridge really start to sink and freak them out. So, but yeah, those are just nice and easy web bridges. Um, and the reason I didn't attach them to the tile, because if they catch on fire, if the players use some kind of fire weapon, and you could say the bridge catches on fire, and you know how spider webs are, they can almost instantly burn up. So um, if they use some kind of fire, you could say, oh, the bridge burns up, you know, it's gone. Um, then they might not be so quick to use the fire on this bridge. But you can do that, or if you decide the bridge snaps, if there's too many players uh, jumping around on it, uh, you can take the bridge off and the players fall into the pit. So it's a nice way to have, to represent that and not attach it to the tile. That way, if something, gets, if something happens to these, you can just pull them right off. So there you go. And uh, thanks for joining me on this short tip, and I'll see you next time.